Welcome to the Football Today podcast, a very special podcast covering, well, the last week what's been going on with the Matildas and the Olympic squad announcement which happened on Tuesday morning. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, joined by the stats guy, but he's not the important one today. Definitely not, no. We are joined by <laughs> special guest, code sports journalist, and let's be honest, she's been the luckiest person in Australia the last week. She's been following the Tillies very around jealous. Australia. Yeah. It's Erin Smith. Erin, how are we? Well, thank you. It's lovely to be back. Uh, now, before we get ripped in, Erin, I do need to get the plugs out of the way. So please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, the socials, wherever you listen to this, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. So like and sub subscribe, sub, sub, subscribe. Yeah, hey? sub, sub, subscribe. Sorry, okay, yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, a couple of times. <laughs> uh, but Erin, first of all, how have the vibes been the last week? You've been following uh, the girls around, the women around in Adelaide and in Sydney. How, first of all, how was it to have the group back together for the first time since the Uzbekistan uh, qualifiers? Mm. It was an interesting one. It certainly had a different vibe to normal just because that Olympic selection was on the line. They definitely didn't have the normal relaxed vibe yeah. we've come to know from them. You could even pick it up at the training sessions that they were taking it very seriously, even though no points or anything on the line from the games. But for those few players fighting for spots, it, it was really important to them. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, well, that, that does lead perfectly into sort of Friday night's game where we did draw one all uh, at the Adelaide Oval. Yet again, another sellout. And it felt like Tony played a lot of the players that were on the fringes to start the game. And it, it felt like the old classic possibles versus probables. It's like, yeah. all right, I've got, you know, six or four to six players I'm, I need to pick. Good luck. Whoever plays best might get in because it feels like in the two games, and we'll get into the squad later, but it feels like, Caitlin Torpy and Tamiki Yalp, if they weren't already selected, definitely played themselves into consideration over the two games. They're awesome, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. I mean, there's no denying Friday wasn't the most brilliant game of football no, we've ever seen no. from the Matildas. And, I mean, the players and TG were happy to admit that straight after the game. But I think he had to do what he had to do. There's only certain times he can see the players play in a competitive window and that was his option. He didn't mm. have a choice. I think it also came down a bit to... Literally, a lot of those girls wanted to play together. You got the usual starting lineup. You got the usual uh, girls that come off the bench. Whereas this team, probably as a starting eleven, wouldn't half of them wouldn't have played together. Right. It was really interesting to watch how a few players went. But yeah, the actual overall performance wasn't amazing in that one or draw. But still, had to test a few things out and see a few players how they go. Hmm. Is that you, sorry? I thought it was poor. Just yeah, pretty yeah. simple. <laughs> yeah. But it's a. It was a, a. As we said, it was a whole group of players that haven't started a game together, mm. so the gelling just was not there. But just at the ground, because obviously it comes through a bit different from the TV, we felt really slow in that first half. There was just, there was no punch to any forward attacks, but it's also like every Australian team, uh, an opposition sets up in a low block. And if it's either the Socceroos or the Matildas, we're like, what is this dark magic? What do we do? <laughs> How do we get through? Yeah. Why can't we get through a low block? Yeah, yeah. I think that was definitely the situation trying to, I mean, obviously with anti Milishik as their yes. coach, he knew he how people were going to come out and yeah. played some tactics there. But I also think the lineup didn't help us. I mean, Claire mm. Wheelup, she was fighting for her spot in that team, but was playing alongside two people she's unlikely to play alongside because if she comes on, it's off the bench. True, so, true. yeah, I think the dynamic on the field made it look disjointed and really limited our ability to go forward. And even, yeah, Courtney Vine and Michelle Heyman struggled to, to pull off any magic. Mm. Yeah, because you did have, so Charlie Grant, lovely that she got the start in front of the home crowd in Adelaide. And then also Caitlin Torpy was there and Alana Kennedy. And I think it was Claire Hunt. That was the defensive four that started where it's like, okay, Kennedy and Hunt are definitely going to be there. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, who's going to, out of the two, is it going to be Torpy or is it Charlie Grant that was going to get through? And you'll have to admit, and also probably comes in due to a lack of minutes this year, that Charlie Grant looked to really struggle in that first half. Mm. Yeah, she definitely did. And she was, you know, it was a challenging match, though, as well. Like, it wasn't any other game. They were coming in jet-lagged as well yes. and yep. not a lot of turnaround time. So there's a lot of factors you got to take into account. It's not just a normal game. Mm. No, no. Yep. Add in the complete pressure of, you know, one sold-out crowd playing against a Chinese team was very well put together. They're a good team. They yeah. took the lead uh, early in that first half. It wasn't wasn't a great goal to concede, but it was something that's like, oh, it's just it was a pressure bubble that burst. Yep. And it was... I'd prefer that we can see to go like this in a game like this, not in the Olympics in a couple of months' time, which you think with a normal starting eleven, we won't. But the the team slowly gelled, and then you sort of get into the second half, 
and it was very funny on the sub ones when we made the subs. Tony Gustafsson, he just was like, all right, Avengers assemble, yeah, yeah. get and out all, there. All of like the starting players are just there, just going, yes, let's yeah. go. I, st- <laughs> I said that on Twitter and then everyone started stealing. I was like, oh, greater <laughs> aggregate accounts are doing better than this. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, that, that was good. Putting all it was great. On. Yeah. Uh, the one I was going to ask, I think you said as well, Alex, putting Mary Fowler into that number 10 position rather than the wing. Alex just cries about this every <laughs> single day. He's like, I want Mary on the ball in the middle of the ground. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that one, Aaron? Should, be, should you be on the the wing or should she be in the number 10 position? It's a bit of a tough one. Number 10 all the way. Yeah, yeah, yes. there we go. <laughs> I interviewed Mary yesterday after the team announcement yep. and she was all very much happy to say, I'll play wherever TG puts me and I'll do my best in that position. Yeah. But yeah, secretly we all know she really wants that number 10 spot. Yeah, she gets She's, more, more yeah. shots off. I think she gets, uh, yeah, she can get more assists in that position as well. I, th- I think personally, yeah. It's like, oh, I'm happy to play wherever I want but just play me at number 10 (laughs) because it's also, (laughs) she's a great player on the ball. Mm. And if you isolate her on the wing, her touches go from, you know, whatever it is to at least a third of that. And it's like, why are you stifling the creativity of one of our best players? When you also look at the Olympics, our wing is probably going to be a combination of Hayley Razzo, Caitlin Ford and Courtney Vine. Yep. Which are great anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's and I think Mary Fowler, and you can probably say this being at the ground there, and on Mon- on Friday night, there was a time in like the first half, she's like, "I'm just going to go in the middle, and I don't care." And, and <laughs> yeah. that's when we started to look dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think she just won the ball at her feet, and she did really drift out of position quite a lot. Mm. Just yeah, she's that type of player that just wants to be involved. When mm. she's not getting involved, she gets frustrated. <laughs> yeah, no, she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just me yelling yeah, at the TV. Yeah, like uh, and, just to su- and just to sum up, obviously, we got that equaliser very late where Mary Fowler's just like, I'm angry and I'm just going to belt the ball as hard as I can. And <laughs> that was a great assist. Yeah. Michelle or Michelle Heyman just there <laughs> and proving what she's been since she's come back into the Matilda setup. Right place, right time. Yep. We equalise and life is great, even though they're <laughs> watching the game. It's like, oh, that was not great. We got a draw. That's all. Yeah, and then the Adelaide crowd got something to cheer about. So cheer. That's all right. Yeah. That's all, that was all good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely the ending we needed to yeah. that match. Just a bit of like relief. Everyone's like, oh, thank God. It wasn't, it wasn't a loss in front yeah. of a huge crowd. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that, that leads perfectly to Monday night yep. where Matilda's two, China nil. Let's be honest, this could have very easily been four or five if we took yeah. our chances. Dominated early. And Statsman's question out of this is, can Claire Wheeler step up and become a starter throughout the Olympics? And this is probably if... Katrina Gorey think, doesn't get up. Yeah, I think uh, it sort of came down to you got Emily Van Egmond in the in sort of the middle there in that yep. ten position, but sometimes she drops back. But then you've also got Katrina Gorey. Obviously, Katrina Gorey is going to be starting, but if she's not starting in the first couple of games, she's still coming back from injury. Is there a Claire Wheeler spot in there, or is she just going to be coming off the bench? Do you think, Erin? I think her role is definitely off the bench, mm-hmm. but I think we've seen she can play when she's given an opportunity. And I think if you put her in there with the right players, so if she's playing alongside Mary Fowler. Yep. And, you know, a stronger side than what she was given on Friday night. Yep. And she definitely can perform if she's with the right players against her. But put her in there with, you know, inexperience or people who are probably getting a little bit older, not quite as pacey. It's, yeah. that's, when, that's when she's going to have troubles to really dictate the play because she doesn't have the help she needs. Yeah, that's fair. And it also helps when you've got a Steph Catley uh, rocket <gasps> assist. That was just awesome. Straight to her head. She's five foot four and she's scoring headers. So that means the assist must have been all right. Great header. Was, great well, great, great header, but great ball. She just had to just bang it in there. So that was awesome, yeah. But yeah, I, I just like how she played. And the celebration, <laughs> she was going crazy. Second ever goal. Hey, I was four. I, lo- I loved it, yeah. Only a second ever goal. Because so I think Everyone when she scored, I was like, on the plane, get her on the plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, was the, they did say uh, in the in the commentary on Channel 10 that Tony Gustafsson had told the team pre-game who was going to Paris. Yes. So that was that a legitimate thing? This wasn't Claire Wheeler going, oh, I could have sealed my spot. She already knew she was going. Yeah, so under the IOC rules, players have to be told 48 hours before the team announcement. Mm. What? So they all knew That's on crazy. Saturday night. So oh, not, yeah. Fats. So a few people would have been a bit sad on Saturday. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So that sort of makes sense with now where, where you look back on the substitutions that were made in that game. And just let's go back to the start of it because I think this is the most important part of the game is uh, the Lydia Williams celebration, awesome. how she got the special entrance to the game. You had Yvonne Gulagon Crawley there, the welcome mm. to country. Not just an amazing moment in women's sport, but an amazing moment in First Nations sport as well. It, yeah. it was a genuine, like, emotional moment. My partner was in tears because she was like, this is one of the nicest things I've seen. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, everyone in the media box was sobbing, so oh. it, it got us all. Um, 
and the planning that went into it and I think how involved TG had been in that planning as well. Like that was yeah, a really right. big risk from his behalf to opt to play Lydia and yeah. give her that final send-off. Like he didn't have to do that. Mm. He could have chose to put Mackenzie Arnold in there or even give Tegan Micah some minutes. But, yeah, he opted to do that in, you know, their final send-off. I'm really happy she got uh, just kept a clean sheet in that first half. I would have been if I was her. I'd have been so mad if I let a goal in and go. Everyone's cheering you off and they're down like one nil or something yeah. like that. I'm just glad she kept a clean sheet. And, uh, it it right. was also yeah. nice of TG to put the his what his starting defensive four will be at the Olympics. Yes, there, it's like for her. Yeah, you're you're not, not going through there. Yeah. Not getting through. But <laughs> every it was very nice that every time the ball went near her, the crowd went off, and then she had the lovely send off at, yep. uh, at about the 40th minute mark, which was it was just a nice touch, and it's. Mm. Football does these things right. You don't see it too often in many other sports, but football did it right yep. and Monday night was great. But to the game, I thought Tamika Yallop had one of her best games for Matildas in a long, long time. Definitely. She was everywhere. I think that buzz of being selected for the Olympics really spurned her on because she was everywhere, setting up chances, had a couple of shots, and the same with Michelle Heyman who put in one of the most dazzling runs we've seen. Wish she scored that. That would have been sick. Oh, if Ma- Heyman scored that, that would have been awesome. But, yeah, you're right. I think Yallop was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Yallop definitely had a, a brilliant game and I think one we've been waiting on her to deliver for a while. Definitely, so. yeah. And good as well considering she hasn't played football for a few weeks. I mm, mean, exactly. A-Leagues is finished. So yeah. to deliver a match like that, it, it was really good. Mm, definitely. Mm. And it's, yeah, so uh, we did start one – what looks to be more than likely most of what the starting 11, 11 nucleus will be come the Olympics. Hayley Razzo on the wing, uh, Caitlin Ford obviously not playing, but Hayley Razzo just seems to have these performances in Australia where she's just drifting in the game and she's like, all right, I'm the best player on this pitch. Good luck trying to stop me. She's she's the type of player that when it comes to a moment, she can flick a switch. Yeah, 100% agree on that. And she knows when to flick that switch hmm. too, like when it's needed. And I think she's very good... Um, I think at a tournament like an Olympics, if you are 2-0 up, you don't want to go all out for the rest of the game. Like yep. You're playing to get in three days. I think she's very good at controlling when she has to excel and when she can just hover and hold. Hmm. And that was sort of shown when she did when she scored her goal, but that assist from Courtney Vine was fantastic. Awesome. But I think an underrated aspect of it was Razzo's pace to get around the defender and then get around the goalkeeper as well. It was just a beautiful team goal, but Courtney Vine playing sort of as a, almost as a false nine at striker. Yeah, striker. It was yeah, yeah. something different from TG. It's like, ah, oh, we have a bit of a bit of variety and some spice potentially uh, in our attack coming to the Olympics. Like, was that something, I, th- I think it shocked most of us. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's something he's been building towards because we all know Michelle Heyman isn't going to be playing 90 minutes match after match at an Olympics at that high intensity with games every three days. Yeah, just for sure. not yeah. going to be able to deliver that. Mm. So he's got to find someone else who can do that. And Courtney Vine is a, is a really good option. She's got the pace and if she can work on her composure a bit, I think she's a natural selection for that. Yeah. yeah. Even that pass, you could, you could tell how many times they've played together. Just mm. Rasso, even Vine has been off, uh, obviously hasn't been playing a lot. But that pass, she just knew that Rasso was going to be able to make that. Yeah. A lot of people, other people in other teams, other countries would go, oh, I don't know if I should make that pass. They knew exactly when to pass and they're just awesome to watch. And it's passes like that that do end up uh, winning games of football. But yep. let's sort of, let's look to this uh, squad that has been announced because we've covered the games. Yep. Uh, pressingly out of it, obviously Tony has named the 18-player uh, squad, but... He's named Katrina Gorey, who hasn't played a game of football for a couple of months. And Caitlin Ford obviously gave a little hammy twing on Friday night. We expect both of them to be fine more so. Caitlin Ford should be fine. But what's the word out of the Katrina Gorey camp with her? Because obviously having having ankle surgery and not playing any football in the lead up to the Olympics, slight concern, but she is a professional at at the end of the day. Hmm. Yeah, we asked Tony about this yesterday because obviously everyone's having flashbacks to the World Cup with Kai Simon. Of course. Um, I think it's a bit of a difference here. Like Katrina Gori is back running. She's back kicking a ball and she's sharing all those videos on her social mm. media. So she's she's definitely recovered, but obviously missing those match minutes. But as Tony said yesterday, you can't not pick her. We can't yeah. have a team without Katrina Gori. <laughs> exactly. 30 minutes with Katrina Gori on the field is better with none. So if she's not up for 90 minutes straight away, um, you know, her playing half a match is still going to have a big impact for the Matildas and the players she can play with. Like her mm. um, on-field dynamic with Kyra Cooney-Cross is, you know, you can't 
replicate that. Yeah, no, no, I, and, I agree. That, and that does lead perfectly. So if, if she isn't 100% fit, but it's something where it's, you know, you need to get a match base in, if she just plays the last 30 minutes of a couple of the group games leading in, so it's ideally come the knockout stages of the tournament, up she's, to the finals, she's yeah. ready for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. We've seen we can play, you know, Tamika Yarp can play there, Claire Wheeler can play there, potentially Emily Van Egmont. So there is good cover, but it's like you did notice on both games that Katrina Gorey just directing traffic everywhere was really missing from this squad. Yeah, definitely. And I think even the energy she brings to the team, like yeah. you can't ignore that factor as well. She's got more than just football ability to bring to that side and you definitely noticed it was missing. Yeah, more vibes as, yeah. as, we, as Alex is always Well, no, it's also about. Harper Gorey adds to the vibes. Exactly, exactly and, yeah. And she energy. needs to be there. She needs so to be like, there. if we win a gold medal and it's on the back of Harper Gorey, I'm fine with that. <laughs> it's, the only nep it's the only nepotism I will allow. Uh, but speaking of this squad, so obviously very tough decisions to make to cut the team down to 18. Arguably, Charlie Grant, very unlucky. And then you look at a player like, Claire Polkinghorne, who hasn't played a lot of minutes recently, only played three minutes across the two games. But uh, for people who have been yelling on social media, I was in initially a bit annoyed at the selection, but it's like Claire Polkinghorne's a centre-half, whereas, you know, Charlie Grant yeah. is a fullback. I think it comes down a little bit of position, a little bit of experience. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Erin. Yeah, I think with Polkinghorne, it came down between her and Ivy Lewick. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Ivy Lewick is she's playing really well, but she's obviously got that injury at the moment. So That's right. yeah. I think that ruled her out. And Polking on obviously brings experience. When it comes yeah. to big tournaments like this, you need someone with a level head who can just put in and know they're going to perform, even if it is just closing out the last 20 minutes of a game so we can give someone else a rest. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to Charlie Grant, I think what works against her is the fact she plays one position. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. Caitlin Torby can play multiple positions and we've seen her do it and perform well. And in an Olympics, when you've got an 18-player squad, if you get an injury and you've got someone like Caitlin Torpy who can fill in any line yep. on the team, then how do you not pick her? No, nah, good. Yeah, that's that's very true. You got, yeah, Torpy literally showed in those games, was it, again, yeah, against the back start. She was playing wing back, then she was pushing up into attack, then she was midfield. She, yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, but it's you can understand why a lot of people do feel stiff for Charlie Grant. She was probably our best player in a semifinal of a World Cup, mm. what, 12 months ago, so understandably that, that's happened, but it's also, like we said, squad depth. And then it leads to sort of other things like I'm – so I have an analogy to make here, and I've been waiting <laughs> three days to use this. <laughs> Is Emily Van Egmond to D Tony Gustafsson what Jordan Henderson now was to Gareth Southgate? That he In England. That, that he would just pick Emily Van Egmond because he knows that she'll turn up and do a job even if the greater public's going, why is she still in our starting Ooh, 11? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I think that's it. I think her spot's always going to be in there until she chooses she doesn't want it anymore <laughs> or makes a monumental stuff up because, yeah. like you said, she, she hasn't made that stuff up. She she delivers when she's on the field. She's just a solid performer. You can She's reliable. Yeah. Yep. Um, and just to so, sort of uh, – we, we had a the, the naming of sort of what the alternates are, like Lydia Williams getting the nod over Yada Wyman – for some, given the send-off on Monday night and just also Yada being a lot younger and having a great season at Sydney FC, was that a little bit of a, of a surprise? Um, not to me personally. I didn't think it a surprise. I thought that was a given. Yep. Um, Lydia Williams brings so much experience. Like these alternates, they still train with the squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their chances of being used, especially Lydia, when you've got a second keeper yeah, already. Zero, yeah. I think, yes, Jada has played sensationally and she's a great keeper, but... What she can offer to Mackenzie Arnold and Tegan Micah at an Olympics is not much. Yep. She doesn't have experience. She can't play that mentor role that Lydia can play. And even to other players, like Lydia is such a part of the team. I think, yeah, she really needed to be there. Yeah, she's more of a role model type. Uh, yeah, like she's going to be an extra coach, really. Yeah. If you're yeah. I don't mind that, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's actually when you think about it, it is it is a great pick. But also yep. uh, a great uh, piece of or uh, writing that I read yesterday was Michelle Heyman, how she in the last sort of eight months since coming back into the fold as a Matilda, she said she's earned more as a Matilda in the last eight months than she did as a previous decade when playing. Yeah, For well me, deserved, well deserved. Uh, well deserved, but it's just, it shows the leaps and bounds that woman, women's football has taken in basically the last five years. And great to see and well deserved given the season she's been having. Mm. Yeah, I actually asked her the question that got that answer. Um yeah, she's her turnaround has been incredible when you consider where she was at, you know, at the Tokyo Olympics. Yep. She wasn't even, you know, a, a blimp on Tony's radar, and here she is as yeah. a star player. So it's 
it's a massive turnaround and does go to show how big women's football is and that um, I guess while we were talking about Van Egmond being a, you know, a solid performer in there, there's shows that Tony isn't close-minded. Like he does open the door to new players yeah. when the opportunity's there. Yeah, no, and, definitely. And I think that's one thing I've noticed is you see that there there seems to be not just a manager player relationship it's there is more to it it's they are one big family which yeah. you can see they want to play for him and play well for him whereas you see other coaches not naming one that got booed at melbourne in a couple of weeks ago <laughs> they play for him rather than being just a part of the setup yeah the, the i remember him saying it's just a celebration and even like the players that we didn't know didn't get picked as aaron would have would have uh, seen out throughout the whole weekend were so up and about they were for the team they were still yeah. cheering they were literally standing up the whole game cheering for their team and yeah it's just a great family whereas i think a lot of other countries and football teams not everyone's on the same page but i feel like this team is so we had a hundred and 20,000 turn exactly. up to two friendlies. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be excited. On yeah. Friday and Monday nights in June. Like, yeah. It's ridiculous how they are Australia's team. And Definitely. Speaking of Australia's team, we are heading to the Olympics. What is a pass mark for this squad? We, I feel we have to medal given the last 12 months of success that we've had and the misses we've had at Asian Cups and the past Olympics. We need to medal. Yeah, medal. First medal. Yeah, I'd hundred percent agree, and I don't like. I think it even needs to be a silver or a gold. Yeah, to be make honest. the final. Like, yeah, man, I'd cop a bronze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 take, I think I think Aaron's right. Yeah, I think we've made that bronze medal playoff. Like we've done that yeah. and lost it. I think we need to to skip that step. And <laughs> yeah, it might yeah. be more of a chance. Just make the final. That, that'd well, be it's nice. the same. Yeah. We had the third and fourth playoff at the World Cup as well, where the we, we were just cooked and absolutely mm. tired. But speaking of the squad, uh, who do we think? Obviously, we have a team full of stars. But will there be one player who stands head and shoulders above the rest at this Olympics? And if so, who will it be? I think it's a tough one. And I really think it mm. depends on fitness levels. But I think Katrina Gorey is going to have Ooh. a key role to play. And then I think you throw in someone like Steph Catley, like yeah. her leadership on the field, but also her ability to just really lead from the back. It's just, yeah, I think she's, I think she sort of flies under the radar a bit. But yeah, I think she's really going to be important in a tournament type yeah. Com competition. Yeah, I really like that. Step, step, uh, I'll go, I'm going to go Courtney Vine. I know she might be coming off the bench. Impact. Yeah, just I impact. Like just TJ absolutely loves that. She showed on the on the uh, Monday night game that just yeah. her passing, she's got so much flair on the wing, inside. I'm very excited to see if she does uh, start or come off the bench into that false nine position yeah. because I think she's going to have an awesome impact. So I'm going to say her. Mine's, mine's pretty simple. Player of the tournament, she will absolutely star and show she's going to win a Ballon d'Or in years to come, and that is Mary Fowler. Oh, Provided she plays at 10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get her in number 10. <laughs> Player at 10, she, she, she will dominate this tournament yep. because, what, she's 22? Yeah, and it like, feels like she's been around for ages. It's great. Like Ellie Carpenter's 24 and she's playing at her third Olympics. But for yeah. me, it's Mary Fowler. 21, this, Mary. You've, 21. you've sold her a year short. My bad. <laughs> but this is her time to step up and be like, I am that player. What Sam Kerr has been, yep. I am her. Definitely. Yeah, right. That. Yeah. Very excited for that. can do it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. All right. That is us done and dusted here on Football Today. A big thank you to Aaron Smith for joining us. Now, I don't know, Aaron, are you going to Paris? Are you following the team We're around? Do you have that I junket? Am. Yes, I am. Oh, we're so oh. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Social girl Spence behind the camera has just fallen off her chair. She wants your job. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll need to we'll need to touch base either before the Olympics and definitely throughout. Stats guy can stay in here at 4 a.m. It's fine. Oh, he I'm can set up a camera. I'm happy to do that. But we will definitely touch base because our three group games are at 3 o'clock in the morning. Good stuff. Yes. Oh, well, I'll be up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for dropping thanks in, Thanks for Aaron. having me. Anytime. Awesome. Oh, all good. Good stuff there, Stats Man. Thank thanks you. to Gerald and Social Gal Spence behind the camera. We'll catch you later on Football Today. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.